Okay, I'll just start that. And it should. Okay. Was the plain music music, Sean, so it's up to me now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome to those of you who are online, we hope, or welcome later on. Let's begin with the word of prayer. God, we thank you for the life of Lily As She touched this family and so many others that this can be a time to remember and celebrate and appreciating her influence in our lives and our world and appreciating your work through her and your work for her now to bless this time just as you bless this cycle The Lord is my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We thought it would be a nice idea to have some reading that we do in the region, because Claire loves to not read and loves to be so and actually translated things and she could read some of them and she was amazing. So we decided we would um, read the 23rd Psalm in your region. Psalm la teatida harin anhilda gan mangler ispunye han larma ligye idrana anye han yada mai kilvam gaya kumilila han yirma Consider my product for the history of the Kitan Shay. And yet, in the long day, judge should be installed for the Kitan Shay. For you are near my shepherd installed in the Kitan Shay. He got a view for my name to put on the Kitan Shay. He saw 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 the Kitan Shay. So, I think we should have the one that says to the tune of Beautiful Savior. <laughs> um, the Beautiful Savior word that we all know um, is the text is from the German text. And my brother found a text of, that has been sung in Danish um, and did some translating. And um, so this is a new translation that he did. And we sang it two weeks ago at my aunt's funeral. And I just wanted to say it with you today. My aunt was also a teacher of stories and spent some time in Norway and Sweden, not Denmark, but anyway. <clears throat>
Gord was going to do, uh, we miss you, Gord. Um, <laughs> Gord was going to do something, um, and so I decided that I think it would be fun to sing together if I had a camera. So I thought those were all, all of the verses of things that she, that I think Claire would love. So, I do not want this to be so low. <laughs> so, do you all think all youngins know this song? If you don't know it by heart, yeah. I think if we start with Do you know the words? Okay. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning, I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out a warning, I'd hammer out a love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. If I had a bell, I'd ring it in the morning, I'd ring it in the evening, all over this land. I'd ring out danger, I'd ring out a warning, I'd ring out love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. If I had a song, I'd sing it in the morning, I'd sing it in the evening, all over this land. I'd sing out of danger, I'd sing out of warning, I'd sing out of love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. Song to sing all over this land. It's 
the hammer of justice, is the bell of freedom, is the song about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. Or all over this world, <laughs> all over this world for our Norwegian and Australian friends. <laughs> Oh, how long? What's the July prime limit? Well, it's the clouds. The clouds. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll speak in the rain, too. All right. Do you have some reflections, Ron? Well, I, I would just say that Claire was and remains my life lodestone. Mm. Lodestone? Yes. Explain what you mean by that. Lodestone is the one that North. What can I say? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. went to Sharpling the first year that Claire was there? Uh, no, I met Claire in 1956. Uh, when she came up to a, a Norwegian camp uh, just outside of New York. Oh wow, we left it. Well, Camp North. North yeah. And it was only by Lutheran churches in Brooklyn. So the kids in um, in the city, so they would sweep up the kids uh, <laughs> and bring them up. Uh, but the, the first part of the camp was a Bible camp, and the second the last week was a Bible camp. So in between was all the fun. <laughs> the Bible camp was fun for the, for the staff, the business of their lives. Yeah, so I met Claire that that some of the shipping said. That was the first year I think that she came out. Yeah. And she had graduated from LBI, the Lutheran Bible Institute, uh, aka Golden Valley College, Long Defunct. Yeah. Uh, now uh, and then, so the and then Augsburg. And so uh Augsburg was what she eventually returned to. Uh, I knew her then. And then I met her again the summer after that at Sharpen. So then she moved over when, when the camp director at Norgie moved over to Sharpen, and that was run by New York City Mission Society. Did a lot of people in Norgie people go to Sharpen? A few, probably. I'd have to look at pictures to see if they were in the uh, but, uh, we, went, uh, we were there for two years, not uh, my God, it was actually two days. <coughs> and then Ron was at Sharp for two years. Oh, really? Oh, you yeah. were. But you guys didn't overlap. No. Uh, I, I did with, no, not you two, but I did overlap with Claire was one time. And then. Um, Joanne worked oh, there oh. with Patty. Did, were you guys there together? Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. Okay, that's all right. So, yeah. Ron, do you know, do you remember Claire talking about how she found North or how she decided to move out? It was, it was Cal. Well, Cal got her to, to Norga, and then I think she stayed there because of the children that she could go with. She was recruited LBI at that, right? He, he, he was the guy who was pretty all over the country. Right. And he was the director of the camp and he had been the and his wife was in the office. Yeah. And he had connections out there. So every year he would sweep through the small uh, Lutheran colleges in the do. Midwest. It's summer camps <laughs> and, and, and he would sweep up a bunch of kids and, and Claire got caught up in that. But he must he must have gone as far south as Missouri though, because the book was from <laughs> <laughs> And she was glad. Oh yeah, wow. Yeah. And that that um, she and and the second kid. And they were unbelievable people. But the maintenance guy at camp brought a snapping turtle in one. And so we had 
snapping turtle top five. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was great. What did Claire do with the camps? Was she a counselor? So she worked with the kids. And she also worked at the uh, outpost camping. She got stuff ready for people to take oh, and oh, go out camping. Yeah. She got their food. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was one of the first to establish the steam camp. Which was at a different site from the singular station. Yeah. Was that the more? She, was that the far after she got out? Because I didn't. Or if I did. She is a DSW. Yeah, I guess. That's what yeah. She didn't yeah. get back until she came back to Augsburg to get an underway. And she got an MSW at the same time. Uh, yeah. That, she I thought that was her story. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was her story. She got her, her undergrad before law yeah. That's why she yeah. came back in one year or yeah. two years for the work. Right. And she was her first And she was her first She was her first And she was her first And she was her She went to a church in Harlem. East Harlem Protestant Church. Church of Oh yeah, that's a nice one. I, I was at the one she was at with uh, the Alamies, uh, her roommate married a black guy, Audrey. Oh, no. Um, no. Anyway, Valerie took some yeah, yeah. would stop by and yeah, see yeah. her. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. what, what's fascinating about Claire's house, she kept weaving all of her friends and acquaintances wow. together in this larger and larger, yeah. you know, yeah. piece of life. <laughs> and it was very interesting to watch. If people didn't get along, that's all right. They'll learn it. <laughs> very interesting how she did that. It's very respectful of her. And and I I, I I think one of the things that, that I like remembering about her is that our mother, body and my mother, learned about and got involved with National Organization of Women after Claire introduced her. Yeah. <laughs> So she was she was weaving you know it's weaving things in all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Walking the walk. Walking the walk. And and in fact, you know, there was in, in Bismarck, but I was always intrigued with this how my mother took the some of her mm -hmm. such that when there was a um, Camp in Bismarck for everybody who worked, willing to work, training, did for us. It was mostly African American on the holiday. Al would call out there and say, We got room for about four or five people. And they'd come over for Thanksgiving. Those kids were because Bismarck was pretty late. <laughs> and they weren't used to it. And I, when I went to New York the first time when I was 16 and Clark took me there, yeah. I, I mean, we came into Grand Central 
and then got on the subway. So I never got out <laughs> until we get out of the subway by her apartment in this neighborhood that was kind of dark skin. And I was 16 and kind of going, <laughs> and my first thought was, I'm a minority. Yeah. Yeah. Not a big yeah. minority. No, she pulled me out into the world. And I was grateful. And then took me through great stuff. And I think that that was the summer too. At each Arlen Protestant Parish, when they were kind of snapping in the white council to go to Camp Sharpening to take care of the local kids, the, I heard the phrase white male privilege. And I remember going, well, gee, I guess I ain't going to have to work so hard. But that's a teenager. Yeah, who wants to work hard? I didn't. Still don't. <laughs> but I think, you know, I, it, the kind of informing that I got from her ignited curiosity. And that's, what's, that's what makes life interesting. What's around the next corner? Are people ready for it? How can we help them get there? I think the reason you wanted to call her a collector of family stories is because of all that genealogy that she and mom did in Norway. Um, when she went to Norway for the first time, she just it was like she had opened this Pandora's box and she just leveled it. And I was reading some letters she had written. She wrote five letters after that, Christmas letters <clears throat> after that visit that she and mom did where mom drove her all over <laughs> and boy did Claire crack the whip on that <laughs> and um well kind of <laughs> but she came back mom and she wrote she wrote letters to the Anderbergs the Andersons the staffs the separate letters to all of them and they were tight single spaced one or two pages and they were different letters to all of them about what she had found in the archives that summer in Norway pertaining to their family and their story and the questions she still had. Which I just thought, wow, wow. Now there is someone who was engaged in ways that made you crazy, but like, wow, <laughs> you, what service you provide. <laughs> she couldn't have done that if it hadn't been for you. And I'm not sure about that. And oh, your yeah. patience. And your patience. And you know, just that, that four weeks, I think we spent three or four weeks in Rome together. And yeah. two of them. She had graduated, remember on the 17th of May, so in the night, she graduated with her DSW. Yeah. And then they left a couple of days later. You had been out there. Were out there yeah. for her. Yeah. 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 40 ways for you. Yeah. Do you remember that spring? You and Gordy and I, we started that. Postcard campaign oh, yeah. to finish her dissertation. <laughs> and we get those we, last two pages done. Right. We we bought stacks of postcards <laughs> and we we had schedules and each of us wrote a postcard every day. And she'd get them and face them, she started to take them off her, <laughs> her door. And Is she showed closet? us the picture back of, the, of closet back door. of her closet oh. door where she had all those postcards we had sent in. And a couple of years later when I turned forty, she did the same thing for me. She like sent me forty postcards. <laughs> uh, she started 20 days before my birthday and 20 Aww. days after. So, you know, she was really sweet and how she remembered that. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was so, so, Mom, you were a big part of that storytelling piece. I can't remember it. But <clears throat> I see you with a very relaxed look in your eyes. You think back on that. <laughs> It's in your bones, Mom. It's in your bones. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
thought I wouldn't have treated it for anything. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you. Oh, my dad. It was a tough trip. It was you a guys, cargo trip. You guys. It was worked. an anniversary trip. It was an anniversary trip. <laughs> it was a cruise. It was a cruise. Yeah, I told people right. you took a cruise on your anniversary. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she took anything that anybody was into. Barb was into tennis players, by playing them. Karen was doing. Stamping up. Do you remember? Claire got so into stamping up. Bobby we stamps. bought all this. Oh, really? Oh, I, I, didn't I go over to Claire's, we do stamping know. up, and she, anything you did. She and then you said, anything. I want to go to New York with you for to see the parade sometime. Yeah. All right. Come to your parade. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Load yeah. up the kids. Let's go to New York. Oh, yeah. She's the one that got Gordy and I at Times Square once <laughs> on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. 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 You guys did New Year's Eve. Did you go with? Did she go with you? <laughs> <laughs> did well, I, did actually, she, she didn't. It was just Gordy and I that went down there. That <laughs> she's like, <laughs> yeah, she's oh, like, that's I understandable. Oh no, no, and 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 so we watched the ball drop. And actually, we had we had taken the subway from her place to Times Square, and so we t saw that it was Times Square, and we went one stop beyond and got off there because it was like, oh, too many people got off there. So we were one stop beyond Times Square, got up, went to Times Square, then. When the ball dropped, we left and came back and got on an empty train. <laughs> Went into Times Square, yeah. filled up. Yeah. And Smart. before the train left, wouldn't you know, the kid from North Dakota, Gordon, starts singing old Langs. <laughs> That's the whole train going. <laughs> and then we went home and told Philip. It's in the staff blood. Yeah. When my friend Jennifer and I went to New York once, Jennifer's mother was living there and Claire was, so we split time. And one day, Claire and Jennifer and I found, I don't know, five or six different Hagen dasses. And it was before cell phones and all of that. So Claire knew where different Hagen dasses were. And as high school kids, we were game. We would jump in cabs, get to the next one, and we just, we, I, we must have eaten five or six different Hagen dasses. As we were doing other things that day, she knew where they were. It took us too long. So it's was talking about day drinking. It was day ice cream. Day ice cream. Day ice cream. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. We did day ice cream in the You remember where all this was? Next time we go. Yeah. 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 Ice cream tour. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a fancy ice cream. Yeah. 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 Stories we can share over some yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. No. Never need to stop. No. Well. No. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just it. Stories are continuous. Yeah. Who composed it? We got. I found a lot of those quotes. Well, so they, these weren't necessarily quotes that we found from Claire's writing. They were lovely. Mm -hmm. And Dad added the Her editing and her typing of the correspondence between Clarence and Lyle. Yeah, yeah. her younger brother. Yeah, I'll do that. We're going to wrap up, that it? Well, we're going to do the intro. Oh, okay. And so we'll pray, and then we'll put some ashes into the hole, and then we'll pray once more. Ensuring certain hope for resurrection to eternal life for our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our Savior, and we commit the body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord face shine on her with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Some of those
Good job. I heard it hit <laughs> Just oh. yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. What? Well, you gotta put stuff in. You wanna do all of that? Bill will come back and. Okay. That's great. I don't think we got to Claire. We're walking the walk. Leading us in prayer. Now, as the keeping of stories ends on others, I pray that you continue to bless us by the memory and that you guide us toward eternal life with him. Take us to command Claire and ourselves into your care. Through Jesus, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Let's go in peace. Thank you. Thanks for including me. Oh, there's going to be more than me. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> 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 